Praise be Jesus Christ, and welcome to this very special episode of CarmelCast. We are celebrating today the 150th anniversary of the birth of St. Therese. And if you've been following some of our episodes so far this season, uh, we've been discussing the, the writings of St. Therese, uh, the, her different works, her autobiography, her poems, her plays, and seeing um, how it is, how her spirituality shines through these works, all leading up to this day. And so this is a very special day in Carmel and really in, in the entire church. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to welcome here with me, I have Father Michael Joseph of St. Therese and Father Pier Giorgio of Christ the King. Welcome, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Good to it's, be here. Yeah, yeah, it's good to have all three of us back yeah. in an episode. It's been a long time. So. Yeah. Yeah. And happy birthday to St. Therese. Yes. yes. 150 years, and she doesn't she doesn't look a day over 24. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it's an incredible day if you if you think about it too, and the fact that you know 150 years for Carmel, you know, we are all about the anniversaries, and Therese was all about years. She loved anniversaries. She loved kind of dates matching up and the seeing God's providence in those things. And so, 150 years for Carmelites is it's it's huge, you know. So so it's a year that we're really trying to get the most out of and, and unpack more. I think the the treasures of Saint Therese or spirituality, what she has to offer. And, and so it's a good opportunity, I think, for everyone, you know, just to really delve in more and more. So Yeah, those, those jubilee anniversaries, I think, present themselves as, as sort of a forced, maybe not a force, but like an opportunity, like you mentioned, an opportunity to say, okay, we have all of these treasures within the Carmelite order, within uh, the Carmelite literary corpus, you could even call it. Um, how, do we, how do we even begin, you know, to, to stay on top of reading these treasures of the church, you know, year after year? And so... Having these anniversaries kind of affords us the opportunity to be able to say, no, this is a special year for Therese, so we're going to take some time to be able to, to really dive into her writings and, and, and treasure that um, more particularly than, um, than we would m maybe in any, any other given year. Yeah, exactly. And I think even the fact the world, in a way, has jumped on board, and, and you can't get more worldly in a way than the United Nations. <laughs> and, and the UNESCO has, has named St. Therese a world heritage person, and maybe not for for the great spirituality that, that we see and understand, but they see her as a woman of peace, you know, and, and, and promoted the dignity of the, the person and, and these kind of things. And, it, you know, it's beautiful that they can recognize in her um, these kind of good human qualities. And it's another reason for us to at least use this time then to, to share who is Therese and the real Therese and, and, and what, what's been happening since her death, basically. Yeah, and one, one amazing thing in the church, I think, is that we don't just celebrate one day when we celebrate an anniversary. Uh, we really we celebrate big. And so if you're not watching this on the date that it airs, which is January 2nd, 2023, the date that we're, that we're actually celebrating the uh, 150th anniversary of Therese's birth, um, then you can continue, still celebrate with us because we'll continue for this whole year kind of marking this historic moment and celebrating the ways in which Therese has... Uh, influenced uh, the world and through her spirituality, through her, her message. I was thinking that maybe uh, today then we could just have a conversation uh, now, you know, 150 years uh, to the day since the birth of St. Therese, we could have a conversation about her contemporary impact, what impact uh, her life, her spirituality, her writings has on the church um, today in our own time. And I think one person that has a, a lot of insight into this is Father Pier Giorgio because he does a lot with our publications. And you see how many books come out throughout the world yeah. about St. Therese mm -hmm. each year or each week even probably. I heard a stat recently that uh, there, are, there are, in terms of historical figures you know, throughout history, books published about them. First, of course, is Our Lord. <laughs> that's, that's obvious. Second is uh, Napoleon. Uh, third is Abraham Lincoln. Oh, wow. But I think the fourth might be St. Therese. <laughs> because there's so much published on her, not just you know, over the past 150 years, but even today, the amount of um, new works being written about her life or spirituality. Because you know, if, if she is, as she's been declared, a doctor of the church, the one of the greatest saints, the greatest saint of modern times, then she has something to speak to the modern person, to modern society. And so if that's true, then it makes sense, of course, that we would be getting books more and more every year, uh, kind of elucidating that, that point. You know, what is her relevance to us today? And uh, I think that's, that's the fruit that's coming from it. And people, authors and, and spiritual writers and translators who are translating from other languages where books have been written about St. Therese, 
are, are all doing this in a way to, to sort of support that claim, that she has something to tell, say to us, and she continues to be relevant. Um, and you know, it, it, it makes sense, therefore, why uh, she would be declared you know, the, the, the third female doctor of the church, even. Well, and I think it says a lot, too, that 150 years later, I mean, look how different her time was, her, her context was, um, the writing style back then, and yet there's something in St. Therese that just transcends all those more cultural, limiting, you know, limiting factors that even with other saints, great saints, you know, great teachers, mystics, even other doctors of the church that don't have that same draw because for whatever reason, you know, just they're... The, the way that they write or, or, or their message isn't as attractive in this moment for some reason. But Therese just seems to stay always on top with that, you know, and, and, and with all the different cultures out there, and they all find something in her that they can, that they can embrace, you know. And so, you, so the, even the, some of the writings that are coming out aren't necessarily even always from great, you know, maybe deep theological writings or spiritual writings, but even people who you know, are just talking about their friendship with St. Therese and, their, and, and, and how that's impacted them. And, and so, yeah, just there's something so universal about her. And I think this is a, is a moment to sort of recapture that and, and, and maybe delve deeply, more deeply into why, why that is. I know one of the friars who has worked for our publications has said, if you put the name of St. Therese on any book, it'll sell. And so you could make a book on um, St. Therese and Godzilla, and it would sell. Yeah, he says, you, you get the Therese people, you'd also get the Godzilla people. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still much more to be written. But no, it's true, because uh, so many of these books that are coming out, even in like the last few years, they're coming they're from very different angles mm -hmm. and very different contexts and speaking in different ways. So some of them are more um, theological and, and, and like maybe a, a more difficult to understand for your average person, mm -hmm. and others are just more like reflective. And um, yeah, it's just speaking to people on a different level. And I like that because I think that today there's so many, so many books that they're all kind of shining a light on a different aspect of St. Therese's yeah. spirituality. So mm -hmm. whereas before when, you know, Therese's writings were first coming out, it was maybe seen more narrowly, but now we're able to just see like multifaceted like all the ways, because her, her spirituality is just radiating out mm -hmm. and speaking to millions of people throughout the, the world. Yes. When you think, like you mentioned, when, when she was first canonized, let's say, or even before that, there was already so much popular acclaim. A lot of it was based around these like special graces that were being received or, or I mean, especially miraculous things or healings or it was just like, wow, this is like a wonder worker in some ways. And that would bring people to read, you know, more of her writings and, and hopefully go a little deeper into her. Um, but there was a lot of popular devotion to her very, very, very early on. And then once the church approves her, in a sense, through beatifying and canonizing her, you see all these novenas, you know, and, and churches named after her and great shrines being built, um, very devotional. And it's interesting. Now, maybe people don't look for those things in the same way. You know, maybe they're not. I mean, there is still a great, you know, a great amount of people that like seek devotional things with St. Therese. But I mean... They're, they're, they're reading her because they, f they identify with something in her now more. And it's like, it's like, let's say, like even her weakness, you know, or even, even the things that she struggled with because people struggle and they feel comforted that here's this great saint and, and I can identify with her, you know, this tremendous human being. Um, so, so it's like, it's the same Therese, but, but the needs change in a way. And then, and then it draws all these different kind of people to her, you know, and to her message, really to Christ, you know, to, through her way. Um, but, but yeah, de depending on the need. I think just as she, maybe on a superficial level, people are introduced to her. Um, you know, I think of the many different churches that you walk into and who do you always see? You see St. Anthony and you see St. Therese. <laughs> it's almost universal, at least in the United States. We see that quite frequently in, in, many, in, in many churches. Um, but I think a lot of people might uh, be, have, have a sense of being, you know, wondering about her or you know i don't think she's right for me she seems a little girly for me or she yeah. seems a little too sweet and you know i am a tough guy so i don't want to i don't want to have to uh you know i don't she's not she doesn't have anything to say to me and then of course we know that how saint therese tends to work she crashes into people's life she's mm -hmm. she's she's uh constantly uh doing good on, on spending her heaven doing good on earth and, and and bringing people to to understand her message and to like you say bring her bring them ultimately to christ she has this way of sort of crashing into people's lives, even even when they would really rather not have much to do with her. Um, and I think part part of that is comes from um, 
kind of her omnipresence in different sort of devotional circles and people who might not feel drawn to that aspect of her uh, come to find out, you know, through reading what she actually wrote that, no, she does have a lot to say to me. She, she does, I can relate to this, to this 24-year-old French girl. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and so she's, she's, very, so she's very surprising in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, you know, I think kind of al along those lines too, it's, um, it's the very, sometimes the very battle, you know, with, with that sort of image that people, that people get, you know, that, that that's what pushes them in a sense. Like they, ha they have to struggle a bit. And there are people out there, we all know, who when something's really popular, it's like, well, I don't want that, you know? <laughs> and so it's like, well, Therese is everywhere. Everyone loves Therese, so I, I'm going to be different. I'm not going to... But then the, when you discover, then she has this way of being so personal, though, to you, you know, and, and that, that you, you come to see that there's something so particular about the way that we can even relate to her as a friend that, that again, yeah, it goes beyond that sort of, oh, she is so popular. Huh? To the extent that you come to, to like her and love her so much and cherish her that you become possessive of her. <laughs> yes. And, and Father, you have a story about that, don't you? <laughs> well, I do, I do remember, I do remember um, in college seminary, I do remember once... Um, meeting someone who just had a tremendous devotion to St. Therese, and she was so instrumental in my, my conversion, and, and I found myself kind of looking askance at him. <laughs> Who's this guy? You know, what does he know? <laughs> a, little, a little envious there, a little, little competition, but I think that has to get purified, you know. <laughs> you can't, can't stay with that. <laughs> Well, one thing I thought about doing here, which maybe would have been funny, but if I had gone to the library and just taken all the books on St. Therese, we could have stacked them up. You wouldn't have been able to see us because they would just cover us completely um, because there are, there's, there's so many books on St. Therese. But I thought maybe just to, to um, round out this, this segment here, we could maybe each share a book or maybe two, um, a contemporary book about St. Therese or fairly contemporary, I guess. Sure. Um, that has really influenced us, um, our own vocation, our own spirituality. And I think that this goes along with the previous episodes of uh, this season because um, we've been talking about Therese's writings. And while Therese didn't write these books, in a way she kind of did, and that it's her spirituality that's shining through another author. So it's kind of a continuation of the writing of, of St. Therese. And so I thought maybe we could just share uh, a little bit about, I don't know who wants to start. Well, I can go first. Yeah. Right. Um, so the book that I brought to share was the, is The Context of Holiness by Father Mark Foley, who's uh, one of our friars. He's the publisher of ICS Publications. Um, and he has this sort of psychological training and uh, counseling psychology in particular. Um, and what he really endeavored to do in this book, The Context of Holiness, was to sort of brush aside or and maybe dig deeper beyond sort of the superficial, maybe surface level aspects of St. Therese that people might come to know just from hearing about her or, or being exposed to her on that superficial level and try to d dig a little bit deeper into the person, the humanity of St. Therese so that they can get, get an understanding, know this is a woman who had difficulties? She she struggled with with various um, you know on the on kind of on the level of pathological sort of issues um, that each of us you know we 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 all have our own pathologies in a sense that make it difficult for us to to detach ourselves from what we're attached to, uh, and so Father Mark does a good job as from a psychological perspective of going through the life of Saint Therese and helping us to see her as someone who's very relatable someone who wasn't perfect. Um, because I think when we look at saints, you know, we, we can often put them on a pedestal in a sense that we, we don't um, feel like we can relate to them. And so Father Mark is bringing in all of the context of, of St. Therese's life so that we can see, you know, it's, it's through these very you know, difficulties and wounds within her life that is the reason why she was so holy. This is, this is the, this is the yeah, this is why, you know, the fact that she overcame these obstacles is what makes her holy. And it's not the saccharine sort of flowery uh, aspect that some people might think about when they think about St. Therese. I always like to just to jump in with that, that how he points out how some of those things, it's not like she, they just went away or like, you know, or she got to a point where they just weren't present in her life anymore. They, they still remained, but she was able to, to overcome them, like you said, through, you know, through her spirituality, through her path. But, but she still had to fight, you know, up until the very end. 
up into the very end. These, these wounds, these things that kind of push us, um, that, that they were still continue to be a part of her path, you know, and, yeah. and so for us too, it's okay. A lot of people, when they hear psychology and, and saints, they, they get immediately turned off. So I don't want to give the impression this is a psychological book or no. that it sort of brushes away any sort of <laughs> impact of grace or anything. That it's, it's really looking at the human person of St. Therese. And, and that's it's the older sense of the word psychology, not the one that we know and think of today in terms of like psychology classes or, or departments in universities. Mm -hmm. It's speaking about the psyche uh, of the person, the soul. That's the Greek word for, for soul, psyche. So it's speaking of that aspect of her, her humanity and what makes her who she is. And Father Mark Foldy has a real gift of being able to look at a person and, and really put his finger on that. Like what, it, what is it about that person in their psyche that makes them tick? Mm -hmm. And so I've seen that, how he does that in, in spiritual direction or in our own communities. Mm -hmm. um, but also in this book, you see how he can do it with St. Therese as well. Yeah. And so ICS uh, sells this book. Uh, yes, available on our website, icspublications.org. Uh, and it's a great place if you... Uh, this is a great book for someone who uh, you know who just does not want to read St. Therese because it's short. <laughs> and I think it'll convince them. Father Mark does a good job of convincing people who you know, want to avoid her or don't want to you know, do the work of, of reading her actual writing or have been turned off by her writing of making her more relatable. Um, more more of a of, of someone that that we might know today in a sense so that's good relatable in that sense yeah well i want to go next if that's all right please <laughs> uh so the book that i brought and am recommending it's funny we all brought these super short books none of us none of us brought this like yeah. huge thick <laughs> thousand page book we all have these very very thin books so the book that I brought is called uh, Saint Therese of Lisieux Spouse and Victim and it's by uh, Father Cliff or Mattinger. I'm not, I'm not positive how to say his last name, but um, he's... We just know him as Father Cliff. Yes, yeah. Father Cliff. Yeah, he's a priest from the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, right? Yeah. So locally to where we are. And uh, he does a lot of work with deliverance ministry and that kind of thing. Um, and this book, the reason I wanted to go after Father Pierre Giorgio is because I think that this shows just the the very different perspectives in which you can approach Therese because Father Cliff is coming from uh, not from a psychological perspective, but from a, a really a deeply theological perspective. And he does a good job of kind of um, using like scholastic theology, a lot of St. Thomas, uh, and, and analyzing St. Therese's spirituality from that perspective. And really his, his goal, I think, is to speak of the life of St. Therese, to go through her life um, and show how grace is working in her life. Um, how we're all called to be a spouse of Christ and how Therese was that. Um, through our baptism, we're all called to be that. Um, but in a very particular way, what that means to be a spouse of Christ ultimately, um, and ultimately in the life of St. Therese, was also to give her life as a victim. And what that means is for, um, so Jesus Christ uh, gave himself on the cross for us, for our sins. And we, um, all people who are called to be his spouse, are called to sh give themselves in that same way, to unite themselves to his gift on the cross. And so that's really what this book is talking about, kind of the theological dynamic of St. Therese, her suffering, um, her dark night, and how through those things um, she was united to the saving work of Jesus Christ on the cross by offering herself as as his spouse and as his victim. I'm reminded in terms of uh, the fact that some people will be listening to this and not and not seeing the books themselves that we should we should repeat the titles again. Yes. We, so uh, the title of this book again. Saint Teresa of Lisieux, Spouse and Victim. Yes. Okay. By Father Cliff. Father Cliff or Battinger or something something yes. along those lines. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I, I I again another very short book uh, like a hundred pages and. It's a little, I mean, it's not a, a quick read because it's really, there's a lot of uh, dense theological thought, but I think it's something that really um, anyone who uh, has a, a basic understanding of their faith would be able to get through and get yeah. a lot out of it. For yeah. sure. It's not just for those who are, um, have doctorates in theology or anything like that. Yeah, and, and I, think, I think more people are coming to a better sense of some of the more scholastic terms even within sort of popular Christ, popular theology and popular Christianity even. Um, and so there's, there's lots of resources out there to kind of go through some of those, uh, 
vocabulary words. It's something that Father Mark Foley does very well in some of his other books on John of the Cross because he has to kind of grapple with that mm -hmm. whole issue of scholastic language. Um, and so there are a lot of, if, if you ever come across a term you don't know, there's plenty of resources out there in order to help you to, to overcome any of that stuff to help you understand it. And Father Cliff, he just writes at a level, though, where he, he does, he explains it things very well. So mm -hmm. it's kind of actually a good primer, perhaps, to um, a more, yeah, scholastic theology or some of the, the thinking of St. Thomas Aquinas mm -hmm. and, and shows you how you can use that as a tool to uh, dig deeper and understand the spirituality of um, St. Therese or of, of any of the saints. Yeah, I think people get bogged down by, by some of the more... Um, I guess we could just say scholastic, but just theological in general. Maybe the word theology sort of turns people off from reading. But theology is, is nothing more or nothing less than, than an analogy to help us to understand. Mm -hmm. And so framed from that perspective, you know, it's not something to be feared or, or you're, I'm not going to understand this because it's theological. No, theology in and of itself is, is, is language to help us to understand who God is and who we are in light of God. And so I think uh, to kind of lower that threshold or lower that, that speed bump a little bit for people to, to not be so afraid of, of more theologically um, sort of angled uh, takes on the writings of the saints and St. Therese and, and specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. We had your book, which is kind of more of a psychological perspective. This is, I think, more of a theological perspective. And then your book is coming from a slightly different angle as well, I think. I would say so. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, again, it kind of backs up what we were saying about how you can just study Therese from different perspectives and get so much out of it. Um, and, and this one is, is called With Empty Hands by, by Conrad de Meester, who's a great Carmelite, Belgian Carmelite, who's, who spent his life studying St. Therese and her, and her doctrine, her teaching, and a um, great scholar. And this was actually his doctoral dissertation, which as we know, you know, you, you put tremendous amount of research into these things, you know, years sometimes of research that... Um, that then, so it's kind of the best you can come up with. You're, you're, you're developing something new in a way, and then it's, it's but this is a sort of summary, and it's, um, it's kind of a, a, a dis distillation, you know, a synthesis of, of what the doctoral dissertation was, and it's very well done. And it really, it's a, it's a combination of great learning, um, but then also relatability, and he applies it very well. So it's, it's not anything intimidating, but it's deep, you know, it's deep. So it has that good balance. And really, what it is, it's called, you know, with, again, with empty hands, the message of St. Therese of Lisieux, which is pretty bold, you know, to, to say this is the message. But he, he really traces, you know, how Therese came into the little way. And he, and he looks at her development humanly and spiritually. Um, and then what was this discovery, you know, and, and what did it do for her? And, and where was it kind of leading her in a sense? So you, and you really do see like a real evolution or maybe evolution is too strong of a word, but a real development, you know, of her spirituality where she did grow a lot and, and coming to see, you know, from when she entered, for example, as a nun, um, she still struggled with some anxiety in her relationship with God, you know, so you could say some scrupulosity, some fears, um, to where just a few years later, you know, through her experiences and through sp special graces, she really came to this total freedom of relating to God as mercy, you know, as merciful love. And, and with empty hands as being kind of the essence of that because saying that I, I have nothing, you know, I, I have nothing to offer you. Like my whole life, I've just wanted to be pleasing to you. And I come to this point where I just see that you are the one that makes me pleasing to you, you know, and it's this, it's this real surrender. Um, and I think, so I think this book is really good to show that, that development and then also to help unpack that in, in how we can apply that to our own lives, you know, that we can approach God in this similar way. And if you want to know who St. Therese is, you, you want to know her mission. You know, you want to know her, her path. That, that's the best way to understand St. Therese. And this really lays out what that path is. So, so I highly recommend that. And if I could, maybe I'm, I'm overstepping my bounds a little bit, but I have a couple more books. Well, I, can, I'm, I just saw after we started recording, I saw that one. Yeah. Bishop O'Hearn. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll take that off your hands and I'll talk about that one. Very good. Very good. All right, nice. That was one. I'll do this one. All right, so we'll do a speed round. Just speed listen. Round. Lightning, <laughs> lightning round. Lightning round. A few <laughs> other books. <laughs> you like. These are, these are non-ICS <laughs> titles, although one of them soon will be. Yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah, you yeah. go first. Yeah. Oh, sure. That's right. Yeah, we, we've recently acquired the rights to these. To the publishing rights, yes. So okay. we'll, that'll be coming in the next couple of years. Very nice. Okay, so this is called Under the Torrent of His Love, um, St. Therese of Lisieux, a spiritual genius by um, now blessed Marie Eugene of the Child Jesus. 
who was a, a French Carmelite friar who um, also was very much impacted by the life of St. Therese and, and did tremendous things in his life. won't go on to him, but, but the fact he's beatified now, um, he started a, a new institute in the church called Notre Dame de Vie, and which, which does tremendous things in the church. And, um, but he, so, so it's, it's just unique to have someone who's on the road to canonization, you know, writing a book about St. Therese. And so for that in itself, it's, it's kind of a, a confirmation too that he really lived like her message. And, and what it did to him is it also made him a saint, even a saint that's recognized by the church. Um, so, so I think just to start out with that, it already has a kind of an authority. An authority. It's also very short, um, <laughs> which is, is it, yeah, it's a real good, good pattern there. You can read them all. Yes, you can read all, all five of these books that we're sharing with you today. Yeah. And, and again, what I love, you know, is that he just goes right to the essence of Therese's message. And, and you know, he does it in a way. I think these were retreat conferences that he preached originally to members of Notre Dame de Vie. Um, and, and so he really just, yeah, he just gets to the heart of who Therese was, um, what, what her message of mercy means. And I think especially, at least it helped me, and I'll just say as a, a, again, going back to my college seminary days, I remember reading this on retreat once and just coming up with this formula of basically to never get discouraged. You know, this book just helps convey that message, to not get discouraged by your faults, by your weaknesses, by whatever struggles that you might have, that Therese's is the one who teaches us that the more we see those things, the more we can trust, basically. You know, the more mercy wants to come into our life um, when, we, when we notice our faults. You know, it's like a magnet for God's mercy. So it can really flip <clears throat> our discouragement, our self-pity, our fear into confidence. You know, and I think uh, Blessed Marie Eugene learned that, and, and then he really conveys that through her message. So I think anyone, you know, this can benefit in terms of helping helping to make that flip sometimes that we all maybe struggle with at times. So Yeah, so that's under the torrent of his love. Under the torrent of his love. Probably not easily acquirable right now <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> because it's out of print, but yeah. we, we're br working to bring it back into print. Uh, it wasn't previously published by us, but we've recently acquired it, so we're going to be publishing it soon. Uh, so that one's a little bit more of a treasure right now, but will soon be available. Uh, so if you're listening to this in a few years, look for it. <laughs> the one that I uh, stole from Father Michael Joseph's pile of Therese treasures is Maurice and Therese, The Story of a Love. Uh, and the subtitle here is The Inspiring Letters Between Therese of Lisieux and a Struggling Young Priest. This is by Bishop, uh, the late Bishop Patrick Ahern, who I believe was previously an auxiliary bishop in New York City. Um, and another a book that I read when I was in seminary uh, that it was really helpful for me. It, it tells the story of how it came to be that St. Therese had this, I guess you could say a pen pal, in this young, at the time, to begin with, seminarian named Maurice. And uh, Maurice writes to uh, the convent in Lisieux and, and is asking the mother prioress if, if, there's, a young, if there's a young nun who can, who can write to him and pray with him. Uh, because he was going to be a missionary priest and he was going to be struggling in the missions and he wanted to have uh, that, that spiritual support and intercessory prayer from a, just from a discalced Carmelite uh, who are known for doing such things in, in the role of intercessory prayer. And so little did he know that he would get the future co patrons of the missions <laughs> as, his, as his pen pal. Uh, and what emerges is something very surprising. I think the, the story, the exchange of their letters between one another uh, it, it, it shows, one, the difficulties that this young man was going through uh, and Therese's insistence throughout all of it uh, of, of confidence and, and having a good understanding of, of what suffering does to us in terms of purifying us and helping us to grow in holiness. And I think this is the main sort of mes message that, that Therese demonstrates throughout her, her correspondence with, with Maurice. Maurice's story doesn't, on the surface, doesn't end with a happy ending, so to speak. He, he, he struggles throughout most of his life. He, he chose a very difficult vocation in being a missionary. Um, but I think we, we can see to the end uh, of, of his life, um, Therese's hand yeah. in interceding for him from heaven. And Bishop Ahern does a beautiful job of narrating this story uh, in a way that... that uh, Makes me want to read it all over again because it's been a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, that book's really a page turner. It's very it's, it's easy. Yeah. It's easy to read. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah. I don't know if you have anything else to, to share about this that I missed, but. No, I think you, you said it. And, and for me, I just remember being so struck by her, the tenderness, you know, yeah. the tenderness that she was able to show the freedom she had to be able to show that. Um, and, and the way that it was that, that very gift of friendship that did so much for him, you know, and supported him so much. And, and that in a way it's, it's a paradigm or a, a kind of the dynamic also that, that she offers to us too. And I think it shows that what, you know, what a saint can be for us with that tenderness, that presence, that encouragement, you know, and, and it was just tremendous what she did for him. Um, I think it's been, it's been close to 10 years since I read this book. And I, I still remember um, specifically one of the, the lines, she asks Maurice to pray for her, in her you know, and she's going to pray for him, but he, she wants him to pray for her. And the prayer that, that she asks him to pray is that she be granted the grace of making God deeply loved, which has always struck me as, as a beautiful way to, to pray and intercede for others, to Lord grant them the grace of making you deeply loved. And I think that, that shows kind of a, a lot about St. Teresa's spirituality, that in and of itself. Yeah. Yeah, I think more than anything, we'd all agree that uh, the best thing to read is just to read Therese herself. <laughs> so we, we, once again, if you want to learn more about those books, about her story of a soul, about her poems, her prayers, her plays, uh, we recommend go. You can go back and look at the the episodes that came previous to this one in this season of Carmel Cast, where we kind of dig into those works. Um, we also a few seasons ago we did an entire season on the life of Saint Therese, more biographical. Um, yes, kind of following through her her life. So I would recommend those as well if you want to get to know her more and her family. Because we talked about her family a lot in that, that right. season that's as well true. too. Yeah. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. So I think that's a good way to end this. Just. Um, yeah, there's so much to read and so much to learn during this year of celebrating uh, this anniversary of St. Therese, her 150th birthday. And we just ask for her intercession that we too um, may, may love Jesus as she did and learn to, um, to be little and uh, just to trust and have ultimate, absolute confidence in his love. Mm-hmm.